ever, we meet the ultra-marathon runner who's been reunited with the stray dog who followed him for 80 miles across China, despite losing him in a city of 3 million people. They join us on the sofa next. Our next guest has one of the most remarkable man and dog stories you will ever hear. Mm. Dion Leonard expected his 150 mile ultra marathon challenge in China to be quite an adventure. What he didn't bank on was the unlikely running partner who joined him for 80 miles of it and turned his life upside down. Philippa Thompson takes on the story. It's a bond that began in the most unlikely of places. Dion Leonard was competing in the Gobi Ultra Marathon in China when a little dog joined him. At his side for 80 miles, they became inseparable. Dion shared his food and drink with her and carried her across rivers, even when it slowed him down. They crossed the finish line together. Dion knew he couldn't leave her behind and planned to bring her back home to Edinburgh. But just days before she was due to enter quarantine, she disappeared. Dion flew back to China and a huge social media campaign was launched to find her. We now had a race since uh, 6 o'clock this morning. It was a long shot, but the almost impossible happened. The pup, now named Gobi, was found wandering in a park. Dion took four months off work to live in China with Gobi until she was given the all clear to come to the UK. Finally, they're home. Two devoted running buddies ready to clock up many more miles together in the years to come. Philippa Thompson, Good Morning Britain. Dion and Gobi join us now. This is utterly remarkable because once you'd lost Gobi, presumably you were frightened about what might have happened to her. Yeah, it was, you know, one of the biggest concerns was, you know, where, where was she going to end up, what was going to happen to her, and I flew back as soon as I could to actually launch a search party in Urumqi to try and find her. Let's go back to how this all started, this relationship. Because you were running... She's looking at you. Hello, Gobi. Well, dogs love me, even though I'm not a massive dog lover, but I, you know, nothing personal. Um, you did an ultra marathon, 150 miles, crazy thing to do. You're obviously half mad. You're doing this, and this stray dog just begins to run with you. What are you thinking as the miles go by and Gobi's following you? Well, she just showed this resilience and determination to want to be with me and I didn't actually encourage her to join me along the race either and I'm sort of thinking, you know, why? Why do you want to be next to me? Why do you want to come in and share the tent with me during the night? And Did you feed and drink her and everything else? Yeah, uh, during the evenings and most of these, these races are actually self-sufficient. You're watching, you're watching that, it's really quite extraordinary. So it's just a stray dog that appears out of nowhere in the middle of the Gobi Desert. Yeah, there's nothing out there, it's just a desolate area. You must have loved the, the companionship, I guess. Yeah, it actually really it encouraged to. me to yeah. um, run even faster and try and uh, keep up with her. Because for a little dog, you know, she's got a massive heart. These legs really get moving as well. And, you know, it's, uh, it's quite encouraging to see. And how many miles did you end up running together? We ran around 77 miles together. Which, oh, it? yeah, it was just under three marathons, so just over three marathons. Then your plan is to keep Gobi and yeah. all the process is going ahead. And then disaster, Gobi disappears. Mm. Does a runner in a city in China with three million people. You must have thought, wow, after all that, I've lost it. Yeah, there's lots of stray dogs in your Urumqi as well, and they're just... You know, it was the worst feeling ever, the worst phone call I'd ever received. And then I made the decision very quickly to go back to launch a huge search party uh, full of volunteers. We went across all the social media platforms in China. It became a huge story in China. And what was the moment? How did Gobi get found? Gobi was, uh, there was some posters put out all across the city. One of, uh, a local couple had seen the posters and they were walking through a park and they saw Gobi and Gobi started to follow them. Obviously hungry and tired and wanting some love and so... Uh, Thankfully, they took her into their home and they phoned us and said, we think we've got your dog. Oh, goodness. What was your worst fear that had happened to Gobi? Uh, well, She'd been lunch and in China, they eat dogs, right? Yeah, and that's, that's all, you know, that is one of the possibilities. But, you know, I made a promise to her that I was going to bring her back to the UK and, and I was, you know, I, I don't know how it would have got through if I hadn't have found her. It was, she meant so much to me. When you saw her again, when you were reunited, you get an emotional thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah. When you were reunited, Again, what was that moment like for you? 
Oh, it was um, it was amazing. I mean, I 2016 was you know had such awful news throughout the year, and I thought this was a great story. And then she went missing. I thought it was going to be another sort of horrible news story. And for her to actually be found was just you know the best news. And she ran across the room. Uh, and she jumped into my arms when she saw me and she was so excited to see me. We've basically been like this ever since. So. And do you go running with us still? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we really want this year to actually go and do some more races together to raise money for sheltered dogs and to continue that legacy as well. So you tell me, for a stray dog, you are remarkably well behaved, young lady. Aren't you? Okay. <laughs> Only all the women on this sofa are this subservient. She's just... She's an adorable dog. I mean, yeah, it seems very domesticated, for a stray dog. Well, everything she does, you know, the flight home, uh, the, the journey that we made down to here, she's just so resilient. She just knows that uh, she has to deal with it and she just cracks on with it. Well, you know what, there's so much misery on this show today with all sorts of rail strikes and NHS crises and all the rest of it. This is a lovely story. I love it. It really is. She's no. got that look on her face. Yeah, like, she has. I've heard about you, Piers Morgan. No, you know what? She's showing me the kind of look, oh. the kind of love and respect. And she's actually, when I said earlier about you and I at the MTAs, I think that yeah. Gobi is showing you the way to go there. There we go, pulling focus. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic to see you. <laughs> Gobi. It's a great story. I love Gobi. The best dog I've ever met. Still to come, Richard is going to reveal why Ed Sheeran is afraid of falling.